it's a fairly grand sounding title that I might not quite live up to. Um, I'd hope to be talking about a project that was fairly close to completion as things have happened, the world being as it is, uh, everyone being really busy. Um, I'm going to be more sort of talking about a project that's going to happen, about which I've done some initial um, investigation. Just some background to the kind of world I work in. I work for this company called Wood, which is um, enormous, um, but it has um, a multidisciplinary environmental assessment business within it that I work for, and I work for the historic environment team. We do some archaeology, no digging, but we do some consultancy monitoring, reporting. We do all that sort of built heritage work. We also do a bit more environmental assessment, working with a range of other disciplines, as you've heard from some other people, to produce quite large scale assessments. And also, I work a lot with um, architects and landscape designers to do uh, multidisciplinary architectural and landscape design. Sometimes it's about mitigation, um, and sometimes it's about heritage-led designs and trying to create new, new things that uh, work with archaeology and heritage in the right way. But what um, strikes me in coming to work in this sort of company, I've been there for about a year, um, is the way that we all collaborate and how that collaboration could maybe be restructured or rethought of as a kind of hy hybridity instead. Because all these sites that we go and look at they involve people from different disciplines going to look at the same places, and that's really, really interesting um, to me to start with. We all look at slightly different things. I need to apologise to Lara here, who in a paper this morning said how much she hates people reading out slides, but I'm going to do exactly that. Um, <laughs> how much we all um, look at slightly different things when we get to these sites. We think about those things in slightly different ways. We keep slightly different notes and then we give slightly different advice, and then we write, I've written slightly different reports, but we write quite different reports at the end of going to these um, exact same places as part of the same project. And what I got to thinking when I was sitting in one of these um, big planning meetings with a multidisciplinary team of 20 people was that there must be things that other people write down um, that are good archaeology useful archaeology, but that aren't part of what we write down when we go to sites. Somehow there's been that split. Other people are doing archaeology. Um, and vice versa, of course. We must be writing stuff down when we go to sites as archaeologists that will be of use to other people. Um, but, but I don't know what that is. So I've been trying to talk to as many people about it as possible. Now, a quick note about my background. I've got, um, I've worked a lot as an archaeologist and as a consultant. My academic background is a bit more to do with um, archaeology and art and trying to look at the, uh, the crossovers between those, the ways that those can um, impact each other's working practices. And I sort of got my grounding here in the shopping centre that I spent um, four years in, not literally, but four years in and around learning about it and uh, following the public artists who are part of the um, five million pound public art project that went alongside this development. And I look a bit at their work, sure, but actually I was following the process of the making stuff. Really. So I spent a lot of time walking around this place with lots of different artists <laughs> and being amazed at how, as I said before, we go to the same place and we see different things. Um, I might be interested in the typology of the bins in the park. Someone else is interested in um, how different people are, are sitting around and so on. And that um, found its way into their art and into my archaeology. And that's um, why you see me here hugging a motorway. Um, it's not just about a love of 1960s stuff. I was taking this idea of um, art and archaeology affecting each other to create a project that well, went against the idea of permanent, um, solid material archives to try to create a temporary ephemeral archive by um, recording the various textures of this underpass on my body. You can see a, a screw pressed into my face and things like that. It's all interesting, I guess, um, a bit strange. 
But, but it's all archaeology. It's all a version of archaeology that's been inspired by a lot of time working with um, artists. As is this photo that Yasu will recognise by having taken the photo, um, where I did some work trying to create a, in a sort of the opposite of the previous project, make a, a solid archive of the first um, Google Street View image of this new um, residential and uh, other stuff development just outside Cambridge. So um, I found this photo, that's what I've got to Google, um, and here I am tracing the exact same bit of the, the floor. Um, and that's interesting and it's fun, and it's archaeology. It's archaeology that's been inspired by a lot of time working with artists. Um, I do a lot of other stuff that's kind of maybe looks a bit more familiar, a bit more normal. Um, I do this sort of, a lot of tours where I go and, not tours, a lot of um, public events where I go and explore places with groups of people and try to give them um, theme to look at in these sites. So we're very much following an archaeological interpretation process where I'm going to observe things um, through to making some form of conclusion about what the future could be. But instead of looking at the stuff that we would normally look at as an archaeologist, um, we look at, say, uh, uh, I'm sure objects, that's exactly what we look at as archaeologists. Um, signs or trying to find history, views, sounds, that sort of thing. In this case, we split it up between rich and poor so we can do a kind of um, fun thing on site. But, uh, and that's had some real tangible outputs. Uh, for instance, this is a, a project I did in Thornton Heath, in South London, where we did one of those um, walk arounds. This is with local people as part of a consultancy for a, um, a forthcoming, a then forthcoming regeneration project of the shopping street. This person was looking for beauty, if you can imagine, archaeologists looking for beauty, public archaeologists, as in members of the public who are being archaeologists, looking for beauty, making these sorts of notes. And what that turned into was this um, redesign of various bits of the high street. So taking what was a, a fairly old standard, uh, not necessarily interesting, although I can see that it's uh, quite good looking in a way, um, cab firm and turning it into something that looks nicer, um, one of the things that people highlighted, but also um, has this sort of map connecting the area into the wider London, that sort of thing. All stuff that came out of that piece of consultancy. Um, and here's another example. You see, uh, one thing that people highlighted a lot was this idea that the um, shopping centre was bland, but they didn't want the whole thing to be cut down and rebuilt. So you see, for instance, this row of just coloured shops in the centre that um, was installed by some architects, um, just to paint brushes largely. Uh, but that, that is a result of that um, art and archaeology um, approach to consultancy. That's another one as well I don't know what to say about that one. So, is that a hybrid practice? Well, yes, it is a hybrid practice. Um, that is entirely the um, result of me uh, playing around a bit with what archaeology can be and what it can do um, and what we should do on site based on having spent a long time working with artists, um, initially sort of trying to copy their ideas uh, and then maybe stealing their ideas a bit uh, and then finally sort of feeling the confidence to um, fully adopt uh, those inspired fully adopt that inspiration into my um, archaeology with the kind of rigour it takes to be a proper thing. Um, how have we been trying to build this into an environmental assessment is that um, I, as with many of us, can find some of the day job a little bit uh, dull. So I like to think about... Um, I've just realised the other causes. I like to think about how we can do what we do differently. Um, really quite differently. And I like to start from that, that point of just how people do, do certain things on site in different ways. And what I've been doing over the last uh, month or so is just um, engaging with a few different disciplines within my office um, and trying to get some idea of 
that start point I mentioned before, what we do on the site, what we look at, what we write down, and what the outcomes of that are, and why they're different between different um, disciplines, and where the archaeology is in what other people are doing on site. Um, it is only fair to put some of my own notes in. Uh, I think archaeologists, in my experience, are very, very individual in their note taking. I quite like just to write write notes down in a book. This is a, a piece of buildings work. I quite like to write notes in such a way I can sort of re-understand how I've been walking around the building afterwards when I come to the notes, that sort of thing. But it can be very different for different people. We're also at work trying to get rid of all that sort of thing um, with the scope of people to work very, very differently and trying to move on to this sort of um, Esri collector app thing that some of you are probably familiar with, where you kind of um, it's linked to ArcGIS and you put points in and take photos and it locates them and you fill forms in that sort of thing. Um, and it's all very interesting, but my first reaction to this is that it's it's massively restricting what I like to do on site and how I like to be an archaeologist on site. It's sort of making me look down at an iPad instead of be be part of that archaeological landscape. Um, so I went and spoke to transport and to people from our transport uh, team to see um, what I would get if I asked them for some site notes. And this is what I got. Um, it's a map with lots of numbers written on it. This is about um, a project to try to work out the logistics of a future move around town of some very large thing. So what they've done is they've gone and understood this whole area of, um, I guess, London, in terms of how, right, how wide the roads are, whether there is any access restrictions on something moving around this space at some, some point in the future. Um, they also do a lot of other things, uh, observing traffic speeds and driver behavior, measuring footways, location of road signs, lamp columns, bollards, observing cyclist pedestrian behavior, um, the condition of the carriageway, and then traffic data collection, like the number of left and right um, turns at a junction. And as far as I'm concerned, all of this can be archaeology. It's all archaeological. It's all um, either descriptions of material and space, or some sort of analysis of people's relationships to that space. But it has a completely different endpoint, which is a transport strategy. Um, related to a particular event or a whole um, new bit of town. Um, I've also been speaking to noise. This is about um, monitoring the advance of some construction and operation of a new site. Um, it starts off with the technical details about the recording equipment, but then it talks about the weather, and then it talks about the bird song and the animals in sheds traffic on the nearby A road and the tractor driving through a distant field. It then goes on to talk, uh, uh, to describe its survey point. Um, it, it is a quite static survey. This isn't somebody walking around, it's somebody with a noise meter trying to work out what it is that has um, triggered any movement in that, uh, on that meter. Being that sort of recording, the outputs are fairly technical, um, easily readable by those who need to do it. But they also have things that I find kind of amazing, like the only um, real description of the area that the survey happens is that they, they take a photo of the listening equipment, um, which I think is absolutely great. Uh, it's technical, like these graphs show, but there is a huge really interesting archive of stuff behind it. Um, all, all these thoughts about what it is to be in that space at a particular time. And lastly, I've been talking to um, landscape design. This is what their notes look like. They look a bit like what archaeologists' notes look like. Um, much, much neater, which is maybe not a surprise. Um, these notes talk about planting. They talk about access. Um, they talk about everything around these buildings. Um, maybe just because they're landscape designers, but they, it's interesting how they don't start to talk about the building and try to think about it. 
Um, also, this sort of thing where we're talking about um, the different planting and trying to um, phase it. And I think these landscapers who I've um, been speaking to seem to me to be the closest to archaeology. I think um, one of the uh, papers before mentioned um, that, that very close link between landscape design and archaeology. What we see in those plants, we see a much more holistic view of the contemporary site, including both um, buildings and planting. But also, they write about access, um, how the sites are used, who is there, how they're moving around. It thinks about topography. It's also future thinking, like this sentence with a kind of nothing it. Sorry about that. Um, and it was really interesting to hear that landscape designer talking about how. One of the things they do on site, not just noting down what's there, but spend time in that space pacing out potential future interventions just to get that idea of um, a kind of bodily experience of that space that doesn't quite exist yet. What can we learn from this? Right. Well, we already collaborate with all those disciplines. So things aren't in a terrible place already. We are already. Um, or quite the same projects. But can we maybe think about moving beyond collaboration into doing this thing that I've called, called hybridity, but it's um, maybe just uh, uh, something slightly different. Some themes that go between all those different, those different approaches to um, space. Landscape and design, uh, sorry, landscape design and transport, really interesting for me that they're on site thinking specifically about the future. Both of those think about uh, sites in motion and movement through space and accessibility. Noise to me feels more um, static and measured, but it's obviously very complex and ephemeral. And with that, um, that photo of the listening equipment and then the, um, noting down the bird song and the tractor driving in the field has some sort of, if it's not too far, not too much of a stretch, kind of pastoral beauty to it that maybe I don't quite see with the transport. Um, landscape design and noise are relatively subjective. Uh, transport seems to be more objective, but there are lots and lots of blurred edges between um, all of these different things. Is there a case for hybrid practice? Well, if we add all of these things up, um, what maybe strikes me is the difference between heritage consultancy and the contemporary archaeology. I think all of those different disciplines are telling contemporary archaeological stories. But people who are on site, um, who, are, who have archaeological degrees and archaeological backgrounds, are calling themselves heritage people and doing something called heritage, which seems to be intentionally excluding a lot of these different takes on site and basically paring it down to noting down the locations of things that we can probably expect to be in a place and their condition um, for some sort of later use of consultancy. When we overlay all those different sets of site notes, we get what looks to be like a, a deep archaeological analysis. Um, it's not just theoretical, it is directly useful for work with, say, um, setting or conservation area assessment, um, and lots more slides. Slightly overrun, so I've just got one last slide that, that I'm just going to read out for you. At the level of site work, we absolutely can be hybrid surveyors and aim for more holistic readings of places and spaces that will do more than collect the limited data we have to collect to write the reports we're, ex to write the reports we're expected to write. Archaeologists, I think, are particularly well placed to recognise and enact this kind of total reading of sites um, because I think when you put it all together, you get something that looks to me like archaeology anyway. But so are others, and I think if we think about hybridity as a collaboration, um, in certain circumstances we can be more than the sum of our parts. I realise that's not much of a conclusion, but it's the start of a project, and maybe at some future EAA I can tell you about how it's all um, worked, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, thanks.